I just feel like it's my calling to, to, to solve this issue because it's something I faced and I know that I can help other students with this exact same issue. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inks Podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, y'all. Thanks for tuning back into this episode of the Awesome Inc. Podcast. I am sitting somewhere in Kentucky with our guest today, who is Kyle Mann. He's also a doctor, so he's more impressive than I'll ever be. Just note that on the record. Who was one of our August 2022 Five Across contestants with his startup Upscore Test Prep. Kyle's got a pretty extensive background, and we're going to dive into a little bit about his company, his experience at Five Across, and again, why he wants to have a startup here in the state of Kentucky of all places. So, Kyle, thanks for uh, being willing to join on the podcast, wherever you are in the in the state. Absolutely. I'm uh, located in Columbia, Kentucky, and that is my hometown. And uh, I work in, as a dentist in, in Liberty, Kentucky. And when I'm not working as a dentist, of course, I'm working on Upscore Test Prep. So again, you pitched at Five Across here recently this this year, and I want I want you to tell everyone what is what is Upscore Test Prep. What, what do you guys do? What uh, what's the problem that you and your team solve? Or maybe a better question: what's the what's the solution that y'all offer? Yeah, Upscore is focused on helping schools and programs per, per, equip their students with ACT test prep. And we also help individual students with all their journey of preparing for the ACT exam. We are very innovative in that we bring test prep to schools and educational programs rather than relying on students to have to go out and, and purchase this prep. Um, I think that's very important because there are so many students that don't have access to ACT test prep and they don't know the importance of it. So bringing it directly to the schools is very helpful for stu- for those students who are underserved. Right on. Are you good with personal questions if I just ask them off the cuff? I'm not sure. We'll just have to find out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Kyle, I I wish I had your resource when I was in high school because I took that dang test too many times, probably somewhere in the like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 range. I don't even remember, but I know I took it a lot to get a scholarship. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was kind of in the same situation where when I first took that ACT, um, it, I didn't get a score that was what I needed to get a you know a really good scholarship. And I knew the number I had to hit was at least a 28 at Western Kentucky University to get a full uh, scholarship. And so I, I looked around and there wasn't really anything in the school specifically to help me improve my score. So I started, you know, using a variety of resources, books, online programs, YouTube videos. But there really wasn't anything that was all comprehensive that was the single solution. But I was able to ultimately improve my ACT score seven points and get a full ride tuition scholarship to Western Kentucky University. And now I just want to make the path easier for other students. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, that's that's half the fun I've found of being in the entrepreneurial space, talking to different founders or people who work at startups. They say exactly what you just said. Hey, I had this pain point. Uh, if other people have the same one, I want to try and offer a solution. Exactly. So that's great stuff. As an entrepreneur, uh, sorry to interrupt, but as an entrepreneur, the educate the problem that you're solving as an entrepreneur, you often don't seek out. That problem often binds you. Yeah. Well, well said, well said and way to be concise. Uh, so how does, how does Upscore work? What's y'all's, what's y'all's company's business model? How are y'all making money? So we're pre-launch, but I'm in negotiations with a upward bound program in my local area to onboard 120 users from five different counties. And we're really focused right now on building pilot programs to get that user feedback and establish program effectiveness to be able to have a good foundation for knowing where we need to move and, and scale in the future. But the way we make money is we sell subscriptions directly to individual students as well as to schools and educational programs through a subscription-based model. Right on. I remember when I was in high school. I feel like I'm going to say that way too much this episode. Sorry if, if I do. <laughs> 
remember pre- preparing for the ACT, I uh, met with someone one-on-one a couple of times and going through the test with someone who is like, oh, I, I could crush this with my eyes closed because I've done so many, they help change your perspective. So I, I'm, I'm imagining that's one of the, the value adds uh, of Upscore that as you work with students and you work with individuals and maybe families as, as parents or guardians are helping their kiddos, that you're getting to, to maybe take that take that stress valve off and like, hey, like, make sure you're viewing it from this way. Or if you're constantly getting caught up on the mass section because of these questions, here's a tip, even if it's worded weirdly. So I imagine that's pretty cool. One thing I'm curious about is who is your competition? Because there are probably a lot of individuals who do either one-on-one coaching for ACT prep, or there are probably other softwares or programs. So we'd love to hear what you have specifically found as you've started moving into this this field. Yeah. So when I was a student uh, 10 years ago, there wasn't anything in the school specifically to help. But 10 years later, there are two main pr- programs being used. One's called Mastery Prep. And it's actually a good program, but it's very expensive. And there's not a single resource that a school can purchase. It's broken, itemized into around 10 different products. And that's not a very effective workflow for schools. And and our program, in my opinion, is better because it's one single thing that a school purchase. So it's incredibly user-friendly and easy. And it's the only thing that they need to get started on their ACT prep. Um, On the and the other program is called CERT, and it just kind of provides practice tests. There's not really a lot of good lessons to help students. And we have all of that educational content because we've broken down the 81 question types on the ACT to create our 81 lessons. And that's a big advantage because we have those videos and, and lessons and quizzes of those specific skills that students need to master in order to improve their their scores. On the personal end, there's individuals that provide test prep, there's Kaplan, the Princeton Review, but we are more competitive in that aspect as well because it's our program is incredibly comprehensive and streamlined. And at the beginning of the program, all students take a full-length diagnostic test. And this diagnostic test creates a benchmark score for students and it generates a learning plan for for every student. So those 81 lessons can be broken essentially into half or fewer if you perform really well. So you can improve your score in the shortest amount of time. And that's there's a lot of value into helping students improve that score in the in the shortest amount of time because everyone as you know are, are so busy. Good stuff. I just I, I could hear you talk all day about this. I think that's pretty pretty important. One of the things you mentioned earlier, which I want to circle back to, is you said y'all are pre-launch. Can you real, real briefly describe if someone's listening for the first time, they don't know some of these terms. Can you describe what that means as a, as a startup? Yeah, that means that we're, we're ready to go essentially for, um, for test users or beta users, as it's called. It's also called you know pilot users. So we're ready for those initial users. However, we're not ready for those users that pay the highest premium for our product. And we're hoping to onboard these users to, to see if they like our program and to see how well our program works. And that information is incredibly important and valuable to a startup so we can really hone in on uh, sharpening our product to be effective for those core users that, that want to love our product. So Kyle, in addition to that, you're, you're getting my mind going with all these questions. So you mentioned as you're about to roll out your, your pilot, your beta users, whatever term you prefer, that you are taking your product into schools. So it sounds like schools are going to be a primary customer. I'm curious, are you also going to work with individuals who are not maybe on a school, school contract? Or is, is, is one market going to be predominantly your focus? Or are you actually going to go for both, maybe individuals, both individuals and schools? Yeah, our marketing strategy is actually targeting both schools, educational programs, and and individual students directly. We have this amazing ACT course that we've created, so why not share it with everyone who's interested and, and needs it to improve their score? Last, last question I wanted to ask, because I really want to hear about Five Across. That's always a cool event to hear about um, startups in, in their, their journey. What was the cause that made you want to go from being a dentist or practicing dentist to building a startup? How did that change come about? 
Oh, yeah. Well, I started working on uh, Upscore actually right before I started dental school. And of course, that slowed my progress down significantly. But now that I've been out of school for three years and, and working as a dentist, I've been able to ramp back up on working on Upscore. Um, to me, this is just the problem that, that found me and it, it excite, excites me and motivates me and beyond beyond belief. So I just feel like it's my calling to 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 solve this issue because it's something I faced and I know that I can help other students with this exact same issue. That's super cool. I, I can just imagine you like, working on someone's mouth, cleaning whatever plaque or tar. Absolutely. Like, hey, <laughs> what's your ACD score? And just striking up a conversation that way. So Kyle, as you talked about transitioning, well, you know, shouldn't say too soon, as you hope to transition maybe from being a, a practicing dentist to running your own startup and, and scaling that, you just recently pitched at Five Across. So again, congratulations. Always a cool, cool experience to be with entrepreneurs who are going after their vision, their calling. For you, I imagine, as you said, this is in, you're in your beta launch phase, that this was probably one of your first experiences pitching. Can you talk about the event? Maybe was this your first time pitching or your first couple and, and something that you might have taken away after this past experience? Yeah, this was my second time pitching. The first time I pitched was in, in SOAR's conference in in June, and there I received third place in my pitch, and I feel like I improved significantly in my five across pitch. And more than anything, that pitch competition really helped me because it allowed me to to really articulate my message more clearly for what, I, what Upscore is and where we're heading in the future. That's great. Well, Kyle, as we wrap up here, I have two final questions for you. Number one, what is something that you're hoping to accomplish with Upscore in the next calendar year? So by next, by next fall in 2023. And then lastly, where can people go to find either Upscore's material or find out more information and be a potential customer of yours? So next year, I really hope that we have a strong foundation of how well our program improves ACT scores and helps those students who may not have ha otherwise had access to these resources. And I really hope that we can provide, you know, success stories and release those success stories through the form of, you know, testimonial and video testimonial that, to really show what our product meant to these students. And next year, I would like to be able to finally actually start selling the program and having it in, in, in schools that are interested in having a product to help their students. And on the individual front, upcoming, I'm looking to start immediately selling that program to individual students and growing that avenue of, of revenue as well. Last, last one to remind you, what's, uh, what's the best place people can go to find out more about Upscore and potentially be a customer? You can find Upscore at www.upscoretestprep.com or you can do a Google search of Upscore Test Prep and it should pop right up for you. Right on. Well, Kyle, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate your time and we're looking forward to seeing Upscore grow here real quickly. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesomings Podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevear and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in. And let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.